Begin by adding storage to the guest domain to store the non-global zone's operating system. To do this, use the Add Storage action. This step is needed if you want to use a fiber channel LUN for storage. In the Add Storage panel, select a SAN storage library and one of its LUNs. After you're finished, the new LUN is listed on the Storage tab. Next, on the Library tab for the Guest Domain's operating system, access the Local Device Library. Refresh the Local Disks table to list the LUN that you just added. Make note of the disk name for your LUN because you'll need to select it later on when you provision the zone. Select the disk and click the Enable Local Device button to enable the LUN. A check mark is displayed next to the disk name now that it's enabled. Using the Associate Libraries action, associate the guest domain's operating system with the NAS storage library. Use this library to store the non-global zone's metadata. You don't need to associate the SAN storage library. After it's associated, the NAS storage library is listed on the Libraries tab for the guest domain's operating system. Now you're ready to create a profile and plan that provisions the non-global zone. Browse to the Oracle Solaris Zone option in the Plan Management pane and perform a Create Profile action. In the wizard, start by adding a profile name and a description if you like, retain the option to create a deployment plan, and select an operating system. For this example, I'll select Solaris 11. Enter a name for the non-global zone and append a number to the end of the name. Specify the source that contains the installer for the operating system. In this case, I'll select the Solaris 11 Image Packaging System repository. You can leave the CPU, memory, and recovery options as is. For the zone's default root file system, specify 20 GB of reserve space and 20 GB for the quota. Select the NAS storage library that you associated with the guest operating system to store the metadata, and select local devices to store the operating system. Select one network to keep things simple. For the zone setup, select your language and time zone. For the terminal type, select DEC VT100. Enter a password, and you can retain the other settings. Specify an Op Center Administrator account to be created on the operating system. None for the naming services. Review the summary and finish. The plan is listed under Create Oracle Solaris Zones in the Plan Management pane and the profile is listed under Oracle Solaris Zone. Now it's time to apply the plan and create the non-global zone within the guest domain. In the Assets pane, select the Guest Domain's operating system and perform a Create Oracle Solaris Zones action. In the Opening panel, select the plan that you just created, apply the plan with minimal interaction, and continue. You can leave the non-global zone's name as is. For the operating system storage, select the local device that you enabled earlier on. In this example, it was C3D4. Leave the NAS storage library selected for the metadata. Specify an IP address. Retain the network resource assignments. Schedule the job now. Review the summary and apply the plan. Fast forward about 30 minutes and you can see that the non-global zone is created and listed under the guest domain's operating system in the assets pane. Keep in mind the duration of the job may vary in your environment. General information for the non-global zone is provided on its dashboard and summary tabs. On its networks tab, you can view its MAC address and IP address. The storage tab lists the zone's file systems and virtual disks. You can see that the LUN is listed here. If you open the Libraries pane and view the SAN storage library that contains that LUN, notice that the LUN is shown as allocated to the guest domain. The NAS Storage Library lists the non-global zone. In the Networks pane, the non-global zone is listed under the network that you had selected. 
That concludes this video. I'm Jody Glover. Thanks for watching.